Hey there folks, today I'm going to show you something that you can do with all your jelly prints that you don't know what to do with. And I know you hate that because jelly printing is so fun and yet, you know, you have all these papers, what are you going to do with them? Um, there's lots of things you can do with them that are sort of unconventional besides, you know, just using it as a journal background. You can make paper beads, um, you can use them as mats for your greeting cards like this. Let me show you an example. I don't have it attached to a greeting card, but like this is a good example. You see, I just use it as a mat for my, my paintings. But anyway, this is something that you can do with them. Um, I like to print on this, um, it's, it's, it's a little bit crispier than computer paper, but it's about that weight. It's, um, so like if you print on cardstock that work, this works too, but it's a little bit more difficult because cardstock doesn't like glue as immediately as this kind of paper, but it still works. Don't worry. So anyway, um, this, sorry for the glare, by the way, this is actually made completely from jelly print scraps and, um, actually I, I printed them specifically for this, some of them. So it doesn't really use up your existing jelly prints if you don't have the right colors, but if you do have the right colors, then it will. So there's that. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can really see the, uh, the textures going on here and, um, I'm going to start in this corner. Like you can see all of the cool, cool stuff that's going on here. And it feels awesome to touch. Just like to touch it. It feels pretty cool. So, um, this also uses a, um, technique that, uh, is more commonly found in quilting in like applique work. So, uh, if you are familiar with that at all, this will be very easy for you. And if not, then you'll learn something new about something that you probably have no concept of. Because <laughs> the painting world and the quilting world do not often collide. Uh, when they do, it's fantastic. It's my favorite thing ever. I really want to make a lot more art quilts. And if you're curious about that, really, um, do a couple Google searches for art quilts and like landscape quilts, that sort of thing. And you will be blown away, I promise you. So anyway, this is what we're going to do. I am not going to um, do this bird again. I'm going to instead do a frog. So um, I need to look at the picture, my reference photo, and see if I have any jelly prints that will work. And then fill in the blanks. So I will be printing more in order to do this art piece but I will be using up some that I already have, so that's good. Um, you'll need all the same things that you need for jelly printing and for collage, so like glue. What I am going to be gluing on is something like this, probably not this exa exact one, but it is basically just a piece of hardboard that um, is has been cut down into this, like I think this is 9 by 12. So. Uh, I don't know what size I'm going to be using. I have a lot of these in various different sizes. So this is what I'm going to be gluing on. If you are worried about um, archival quality, then you will want to prime this with some gesso first. Otherwise, it's perfectly fine. Um, I, the glue I'm going to be using is just plain Elmer's Glue All. And I will be using a... Um, uh, like a little card to press stuff down. Um, I can't... Oh, you might want some scissors or an X-Acto knife, um, but other than that we're going to be ripping, mostly. I think. So I think that's all the things that you need. Besides, you know, like a jelly plate or, um, and, and paints and like various textural stencils and things. So, um, I am going to do the rest in time lapse so that you don't like get bored watching a whole bunch of jelly plate jelly printing um which is fun when you're doing it with the person but not so much watching so anyway time lapse here we go <laughs> Okay, so 
I went through and I sorted out ones that I think that I might be able to use for this frog. Um, now, I will decide better off later when I'm actually doing it which ones will work better. Like, there's some really cool pink flower buds in this one that are this bright pink. I don't know if it's this pink or if it's this red or um, any combination of anything really. So um, I will decide that later. Uh, so I'm going to put these back and I found that a great way to carry or to preserve the jelly prints is as long as your papers are not too big and it seems like a 9 by 12 actually fits in this pretty well is this um cereal box it's just a collapsed cereal box now cereal boxes come in different sizes of course so um and it does take up the whole the whole thing so um this works really well i can just then put this in my uh filing so anyway I thought I'd share that tip with you. And, um, let's get started. This is exciting. Okay, back to time lapse.
here is the finished result. I didn't have to actually make any new jelly prints. I had everything that I needed, which is really spectacular. I used up some jelly prints and I got a great painting out of this. I guess it's painting. Is it a collage? It's definitely a collage, but I painted on top of it to sort of uh, round out the the shapes and give it a little bit more depth so um you can you can do that there's no rule against it and i also used some ink to sort of give it uh a little bit i don't know i i, I thought it needed something so i did the ink <laughs> i think it looks all right so i'm going to zoom in here so you can see a little bit better all these wonderful jelly prints i love jelly printing it's so so fun so anyway, i'll start up in here in the corner a uh, funny story I will tell you in full disclosure I did this in early 2017 I'm not exactly the sh sure the right date but uh, I totally forgot that I filmed it I, I was looking through some files on my computer and I saw this footage and I thought what happened to that why didn't I put that on YouTube so here it is, 2018, February, and I am finally finishing up this video. So, <laughs> I hope you don't mind the delay, but uh, I, I think that it's still relevant. People are still doing jelly printing. Um, I think they will continue to do it because it's so fun. Uh, one interesting thing about this technique is you can not only use the colors, but um, the prints because like say for right here this is a fern leaf that I actually printed this isn't something that I cut out and pasted it's actually on the print whereas these flowers are actually cutouts so you know you can use your your stencils and your um, uh, uh, patterns to the advantage of whatever motif you're using so I thought that I would go a little bit more in depth about how to do a specific photo picture like this. And basically you, you draw it out or you can trace it. There's no rules against that sort of thing. But uh, basically you want um, your, your image here, in this case a frog, and you might have to draw a couple different different ones so trace those so that they're exactly the same so anyway you want to trace it out and then you cut out the parts that are different colors so I cut out the main back here the belly the arm um, and the eyes and I believe the the feet yeah I did the feet too and uh, you want to then in, um, find some jelly prints that are the right colors or they have the right value because you can adjust colors later. But you then find the right jelly prints and then uh, trace around your shape and cut it out. And you want to cut it out so that you can attach it to each other so that there's a little bit of overlap so that you don't have to cut each side perfectly and there might be background showing otherwise. So there is about an eighth of an inch overlap, for example, right here in the mouth and over here. And um, I then you can adjust with paint like I did right here. I made this arm fade into the belly, whereas um, you can probably see uh, if I tip it the right way, let's see. Maybe if I zoom in really, really close, yeah, that might work. You can actually see right there is the line of the uh, cut that I did. And I realized after I had glued it down that that was the wrong shape. So I fixed it, covered it with paint, and then I put a uh, black line there to fix it. And if you don't look so closely, you can't actually tell. So there is the whole thing. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I will get back to you. So as always, thanks for watching.